Mr. Arshad Anis for our next retail track that is Retail Development and Digital Transformation in Pakistan. Please give a big round of applause to Mr. Arshad Anis. Operations Private Limited United Brands Limited. He is an experienced entity with a demonstrated history of working in the consumer services. Furthermore, he is skilled in negotiation, marketing management, business planning, and management. Yes, sir.
that of Italy and the UK by 2022. And this is what that slide shows. Pakistan has a growing population of millennial shoppers who do not mind spending for the kind of lifestyle they'd like to lead. According to, uh, to a research analyst, a Euro monitor, it is not like the baby boomer generation where savings for the future was important. According to Bloomberg, Pakistan's retail outlets will grow to 1 million outlets in the next three years. Pakistan today mirrors what India went through about 10 years ago. Foreign direct investment would be attracted to any such developing market. The major impediment to it attracting a high level of FDI in this sector, however, will, be, will only be the political uncertainty in the country. Currently, the modern trade, retail infrastructure in Pakistan is limited only to large cities like Karachi, Lahore, Rawalpindi, Islamabad, and Tesla. On a national level, hypermarkets and superstores account for over a little of, account for a little over two percent of food retail sales. The fact that there is already over 50 million people who live in Pakistan's 10 largest cities presents a significant size consumer market to investors in the retail sector. Pakistan's enormous retail growth and expansion potential offers great opportunities for international players in the apparels, beauty, food chain, food products and health sectors. In the grocery sector, there is a growing number of neighborhood chains coming up, dominated currently by the Utility Stores Corporation with roughly about 6,000 outlets across the country. Similarly, we have somebody from Metro sitting here who can verify to that. Metro has started their operation, Metro Group started their operation at the wholesale end of the spectrum with the opening of their first store in 2007 and have since expanded their network in nine outlets with a plan to grow to 20 outlets in the medium term. I don't know whether that is correct or not. But it is. The chain has faced some challenges. As was evidenced by our panelists who spoke about uh, Metro, the chain has faced some challenges. And while the customer base is clearly there, the growth dynamics will clearly depend on the success of their restructuring effort. For the immediate future, retail investment in Pakistan is likely to be concentrated in the non-food and food sectors. The non-food will clearly be dominated by international apparel, beauty, jewellery and health. All the segments sought after by the country, rising population and growing middle class. The retail investment in the food sector in Pakistan is likely to grow rapidly with expansion in the food manufacturing base and the quality of infrastructure like roads, coal chains and educated, skilled workforce. At a broader level, factors like globalization and liberalization of trade have spurred consumerism in Pakistan. Politically, Pakistan's global imports have recorded a significant growth since 2000. Easy access to credit, exposure to online shopping by small and large retailers is further fueling the growth of Pakistan's retail industry. With the progression of time, Pakistan is slowly becoming home to new retail formats and diversifying from traditional retail clusters into large sized modern retail stores providing the shoppers everything from grocery, clothing, fresh produce, beauty items, farmer products to electronics and white goods items on the one roof. Shopping at these stores is an experience in itself and more and more middle class shoppers are taking it. The opportunities the shopping malls provide with multiple brands and outlets in each category with family entertainment, food courts, air conditioning and conducive environment 
have offered a great attraction to middle income and upper income families. This is resulting in more malls and upper end flagship stores coming up in the metropolitan and second tier, second tier cities. However, this phenomenon, the transformation of retail scene has taken some time to gain traction. For a long time, the spaces were empty and consumer footfall low and slow. Customers apprehended that prices in these big malls and large retail stores would be higher than in the traditional bazaars and high street outlets. Retailers, and the retailers worried that locating themselves away from the hustle and bustle of the main streets would lose them customers. Today, however, the malls and large department stores are a bus with activity and space is at a premium. So what has brought about this change? Well, first of all, Pakistan got to grips with the law and order situation in the country. Terrorism was controlled. Economy started to perk up and as a result, the middle class grew. According to some estimates, almost 35% of the population fall under this classification. Additionally, and perhaps more importantly, technology and the startup culture has reshaped entrepreneurship in Pakistan, leading to the emergence of a generation of retailers willing to invest and experiment with new business models. The most obvious example being the law revolution. What started out as a designer's exhibition producing fabric to sell at short or short duration exhibitions evolved into design houses with standalone flagship stores in multiple malls. This paradigm shift in the retail culture and its upgradation is now creating employment and career opportunities for new entrants in the job market. Just as the entry of fast food chains introduced better trained, better dressed, educated, polite and friendlier waiting staff in the restaurants, retail stores are now providing long-term career opportunities to young graduates in sales, store management, operations and service and customer service both at the front and the back end of the business. However, however, despite the buzz and the great noise behind the changing retail scene, as I said earlier, all this is at an early stage of development. This, only, this is only the start of the modern stores and mall culture in Pakistan and is currently confined only to a few large metropolitan cities. There is a significantly large opportunity in this sector. Retail expansion and its development of modern lines will require considerable investment in the future in addition to the availability of right expertise to ensure its viability by attracting the right brands in the country and ensuring the right footfall. Globally, retail is experiencing a few hiccups. And a panelist mentioned here as to how in some cities in the US, cities have become graveyards or walls. So, retail is experiencing a few hiccups in some markets, partly due to overcapacity and partly due to the effect of online shopping. In Pakistan, too, online shopping is growing, albeit at a very slow pace. Even if online shopping gains traction and grows to a certain extent, as the global experience shows, for many people, there is no substitute to the let's go out to shop experience. And there is no question, there is no question of an over, over capacity on the traditional format in Pakistan. And hence, there are many, many more years of profitable growth in this sector. 
What has, however, changed in the global context is the customer's need for convenience. They want access to online shopping while they may be shopping in their favorite retail stores. Hence, the rising popularity of the Omni store model, whereby customers can move seamlessly between off and online according to their preference at the moment. This model is surfacing and will begin to take root in Pakistan and coexist with the current landscape. <coughs> At this stage, let's now go back and see the emerging global trends. Can we have this slide on the global trends, please? The first one. Despite the notion of the demise of brick and mortar, so the global study, I'm giving you extracts out of the global study. This is not something that I'm saying on my person. This is an extract of a global study. The list of long standing retail brands that shut their door is too long to list. Often overlooked is the fact that many stores opened as well. We will see a similar pattern in 2019. By January 2019, 90% of all retail globally was done in physical stores. Iconic retail brands like Apple, Sephora and Costco continue to succeed despite relying mainly on brick and mortar stores. As a consequence, new classes of retailers are emerging. There are retailers who started online and are moving to physical brick and mortar. Others are merging bricks and clicks. Do you know? We know Amazon as an online shopping, uh, but do you know that they have gone into brick and mortar stores? And they generate a lot of sales out of their brick and mortar stores. Retailers are seeking to understand their share of consumer spending and how their consumers search, shop, and buy in order to devise new retail models. Whether that means having a showroom or only having a strong presence in e-commerce, retailers are reinventing how they do business. So why aren't physical stores dead? Put simply, stores that are doing well offer a customer experience that meets or exceeds customer expectations. Joe Mann, the president of North America at Verifon predicts consumers will visit physical stores as long as there are new and interesting reasons to go. Leading retailers take advantage of their physical spaces to maximize experience per square foot in the real life interaction customers have there. In summary, customers will shop where they enjoy their experience. This could be on a single channel or a combination of channels. And I can give you examples of that. A panelist talked about uh, of a Nike store that has just opened up in, in Manhattan in New York. It's a typical example of how experience is changing the retail landscape. This Nike retail store that uh, the distinguished panel talked about features features a mini video basketball court, a center, a system that that simulates runs in different locations, a small shopping interior, a shoe bar where customers can customize a pair of Nike gear. It is as much a place to play as it is a place to shop. Now that is what is changed and we know about 
Today's customer has a world together. Today's customer has a well developed sense of what is authentic and what is totally intended to be right say. This has led to a rise in consumers who make value based judgments about what to buy and where to shop. These consumers believe their purchase habits have an impact on the world. To win customers today, businesses need to stand for something and reflect that message consistently. Throughout the entire business, from senior leadership to the front line staff. Now we know that we have positive coming and we need to curtail my short group to skip uh, some of the great details that I have uh, that I was talking about and go for Back in 2016, Gartner predicted that by 2020, 85% of customer interaction will be managed without human involvement. In 2018, we will see AI adoption continue to rise with chatbots taking the lead. Due to increasing ease of deployment, instant availability and improved quality, chatbots will become more and more common to manage customer service queries and to make intelligent purchase recommendations. We will also see the rise of AI powered conversational interfaces and voice assistance. Retailers can engage this in this kind of technology to answer the key questions and supplement human customer support in care case shopping or voice comments. I'm skipping from some of the details in global trends for the cut down the line. Then four. We have ten four five Many retailers who haven't met customers' demands are simply no longer in the game. Forrester anticipates this challenge, challenging new environment will, be, will place harsh and unfamiliar demands on companies requiring changes in how they develop, market, sell and deliver products and services. This just-in-time gratification puts a huge strain on retailers. In a salesforce.com report, 64% of consumers said they expect companies to respond to and interact with them in real time. The need for speed will only increase as technology enables and advances. New technologies have put the customer in the driver's seat and they have the power. Again, I'll skip some of the details here. Come to the end now. The purpose of giving you a relatively detailed insight on the trends is, is to show that there is much to look forward to in terms of further evolution of retail in Pakistan. We are several years behind. However, if retail is to grow and it should, it will require common support given its role as a big employer in both the services and manufacturing sectors. So far, the government's attitude to retail has been largely is a source of taxes and while taxes must be paid, the government must be encouraged to create enabling policies that will sustain and grow what has now become a key driver of the economy. 
getting to grips with the current moves of the economy, bringing down the current account deficit, curtailment of the fiscal, uh, fiscal deficit, and stabilizing the rupee will go a long way in, in restoring investor confidence and attracting foreign direct investment. Thank you. There, is, there has been no hiccup in the Pakistan Indian industry at all. I was talking to the global context. There have been a number of outlets that have gone the up. And their basic goal was that they could not firstly keep up with the changing technology and there was an oversupply in those cities and that's why uh, they changed. In Pakistan, there has been no such. But in Pakistan, if a store is open or closes, the regions are not what the regions were or are in the developed world. There are different reasons. Location, wrong planning, uh, not enough uh, uh, merchandise in the store. There are many factors why a retail store, if at all, it closes down in parts. There are not many stores closed down in parts. So do you think this current economics We hope and we live on hope. I am a great optimist. I spent my life in Pakistan. And uh, for the 40 plus years that I have been in business, I believed in it. I traveled across the world, negotiated businesses, talked to companies both in the United States, Europe, Far East, everywhere, and sold Pakistan very aggressively. Yes, I've been a, I've been a salesman selling Pakistan across the world, and you can't sell the country if you don't have hope and belief. And I certainly hope uh, there is a lot of resilience in this country. We are uh, we are an intelligent people. There is a lot of lot is wrong in this country. There is no question about it. It has to be put right. But we as individuals first have to do our, play our part. You need to ask the question to yourself, am I playing the part that I need to play in improving the state of things in Pakistan? Each one of you sitting here, I have a responsibility firstly to play my role before I ask the question. That doesn't happen in this country. We all blame others for what is happening. Yes, a lot is wrong. At the state level also. Now you and I can't go and this Islam and start dictating this. Our own space of influence can play a very significant uh, productive role. Unfortunately, that is what does not happen. We are all questioning things, but never looking at ourselves that am I fulfilling my own responsibility or not. Now let's start doing that in the Pakistan. At all forums I say, stop criticizing because it's it affects your mindset also. Start playing a positive role. Let's do what we can do. Let's, I tell myself all the time, Arshad, whoever thinks start doing what you need to do. Allah has given you so much. This country has given you so much. How much are you returning it and giving it back to the community that has provided you the opportunity to be where you are? You were nothing. When you came out of the university, you didn't even have a hundred rupee note in your pocket. Now, the country has given you everything. Now, I need to play my role. So you, all of you have to play role. And then if you are playing our role and doing something significant enough, worthwhile, then probably possibly we have a, we have we we have the the right to make to criticize also. But criticizing only and not doing anything is not acceptable. Yes sir. We can improve our tax base because you know we have a very few numbers of taxpayers here in Pakistan. Government faces a lot of problems just because of very few numbers of taxpayers here. Retailers are paying uh, taxes. The retailers are paying their taxes because everything they sell already has a tax on it and that gets paid automatically to the government of Pakistan. That's what the, the, the country is living on. That's what the tax base really is. Every product. Poor man buys who doesn't pay, who doesn't have to pay, pay, pay any taxes because his income is that low, still pays indirect taxes. So indirect taxes cannot be avoided. Uh, I imagine how can an online buyer can be included in the tax tax strike Look, it's not the online buyer and how can that online buyer be brought into the tax The government is looking at, and you read about it also, that they are looking at ways and means of uh, free to live, high net worth people who do not pay taxes. 
if you live in a big house, you drive a big car, and you have servants, your lifestyle uh, tells everyone that you are you are a you are a, a well-off person who, who makes a significant amount of money. The government is now going to go and look into it and go to those people and try and bring them into the next step. But the retail retailer or retail sales is very very good. Yeah. Uh, with respect to uh, giving the information to the market, uh, so that we could be in a better position to analyze. Did you have any direction card here? For sure. And do you think that we should also need to open that charge up with reference to the fact that that our consumer is in which way it is and uh, come on the same table and talk about that you know, in which way it is 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 in which way For sure, absolutely. Only, we live in real time. What used to come to Pakistan when I was a kid going to school and college used to come to Pakistan, their imprint would appear in the US it would take at least 10 years before it came to Pakistan or even more in time. Today what happens? Anywhere in the world, there is instant knowledge of that in Pakistan. And within weeks and months, we see things happening in this country. So what has happened in the West is bound to happen here. What we talk about becoming more and more open, socially responsible, is the need of the country will have to do it. So let's make it simple. Would you be open to tell me about what trends have you seen in in the past one years? I come to you with questions about that. Personally, for my own reports. Look, I personally, I have, I'm not anymore in idea. I've just come out of that job, I've retired. And that is something I can tell you on a one to one basis, but yes. uh, oh, not, in a, a not in a public forum. Not over a lunch networking session, surely, sir. Last question. Assalamualaikum, sir. Your marketing has been great, like, but as compared to other countries, uh, Pakistan is far behind. So, uh, what do you think, what the role the government of Pakistan should play in terms of promoting retail and digital transformation in Pakistan when in terms to marketing? Uh, uh, I'm praying the progress of uh, online sales in Pakistan is the fact that your credit card population is minuscule in this country, very, very little. And as a consequence, we have gone on to uh, a format where uh, you pay cash and delivery. No, not too many retailers do that because in many instances there are refusals also. So it's not a sure way of uh, developing the retail market. And until and unless the banking sector opens up and our credit card population increases, there will be this uh, issue with the uh, e-commerce in Pakistan. So one of the biggest impediment is the is the is the population of uh, credit cards. Very less than one percent of the people in this country have credit cards. Less than one percent. So that population has to grow before we can actually improve the e-commerce platform in this country.